today we shall be discussing the condition for rolls theorem c what does this say let a function be a function on a and b which belongs to some real numbers now the rolls theorem say that the given function has to be continuous in the closed interval ab okay whatever function will be given to you in the question it has to be continuous first point second point the given function has to be derivable in open interval a comma b second point it has to be differentiable two points done third postulate of the rolls theorem is that f of a has to be equal to f of b you will be given the values of a and b in the question okay put the value of a in place of x put the value of b in place of x find out these two values they have to be equal these three conditions of rolls theorem should be met then what does it further say there should be at least one value of c such that f dash c is equal to 0 now how to elaborate this sentence i'll tell you in the coming slide but here you listen that if these three postulates are met these three postulates are met in the rolls theorem this is number 1 this is number 2 and this is number 3 then there should be one value of c at least one value where f dash c has to be 0 and that value of c should lie in this open interval between a and b okay these are the conditions for a function to fulfill the rolls theorem now see supposingly this graph is given to you first of all the first step which you will be finding is is this function continuous see this graph the continuous means that you can make the graph of that function without lifting the pen and very well you can make it so yes is this function continuable in this from a to b in the closed interval yes it is continuous second point is is the function derivable in this closed interval yes it is differentiable now the third point is is if f of a is equal to f of b as you can clearly see this is f of this is the a point and this is f of a point this is b and this point is f of b yes it is same because they both have the same y value you can see the a function y value is this spot and it is the same so this y value is the same yes f of a is equal to f of b now first three postulates met what did i further say there exists some value in c in this open interval such that f dash c is equal to 0 now this is saying that there should be one value between this a point and this b point the value is this c at least one value of c such that f dash c becomes 0 slope becomes 0 at at least one point slope of the tangent at any point on the graph is equal to the derivative of the function at that point now at this c point if you draw this tangent right it is parallel to x axis this means the derivative is zero f dash c is equal to zero this means the slope of the curve at point c the tangent is parallel to x axis is it clear so i repeat just listen very carefully is the function continuous yes the function is continuous is the function derivable yes it is derivable now the third point the third postulate is fa is equal to fb very well fa has this say y value fb also has this y value yes so you can say that because they have same y value f of a is equal to f of b three conditions met once these three conditions are met next the next line is there exists some value in some value c in this open interval ab such that f dash c becomes zero what is the meaning of the line f dash c becomes zero slope becomes zero at at least one point when you will make the slope of to this curve this tangent if it is parallel to x axis that means the derivative is zero this is the whole structure of the rolls theorem now see you take another function the same steps is the given function continuous yes it is continuous because you are able to make this graph without lifting your pen is the given function derivable in this 
Open interval AB, yes, it is derivable. Now see, this point is A and this point is B. Is f of A is equal to f of B? You can see clearly from the graph that f of A is equal to f of B because they have the same y value. Now the next line, there exists some C in this open interval A comma B such that f dash c is equal to 0. If you say that f dash c is equal to 0, this means the slope of the curve at c. What is the derivative? What is the derivative at that point? The slope to the tangent at that point. Now the tangent is parallel to x-axis. This means that f dash c is equal to 0. Yes, this function fulfills the Rawls theorem. See, the derivative will be equal to 0 somewhere in the interval. This means that there will be a horizontal tangent line somewhere in the interval. This is what the value of C is. The value of C has to lie between A and B and it has to be a point where the tangent will be a horizontal straight line. It will be parallel to the x-axis. Now see, why does the Rawls theorem want a continuous function? As is shown in these graphs, the functions which are not continuous do not have a point that has a horizontal tangent line. When I say continuous function, this means that you can draw the graph of that function without lifting the pen. Now those functions which are not continuous, see, can you draw a tangent here? No, you cannot. These non-continuous functions, they cannot have a horizontal tangent line. That is why in Rawls theorem, we want continuous functions. The functions which are continuous but not differentiable everywhere on this interval AB, they will have a corner or a cusp somewhere in the interval. See, this is having this. This is having this. Somewhere a corner or a cusp. They may not have a horizontal tangent line as is clearly shown in the graph. So, it's not possible there to draw the tangent line horizontal tangent line. So, in the Rawls theorem, you need a continuous function, you need a derivable function. Now, I'll give you some tips and tricks. See, whenever you get a question to solve the Rawls theorem, if you are given a polynomial function, right? See, what will you do? All the polynomial functions, they are continuous, they are derivable on R. Now, in this context, you don't need to prove that this is a polynomial function. Why is it continuous and why is it derivable? No need. You just write down that the polynomial, the given function is a polynomial function. It is a, con all the polynomial functions are continuous. This is also continuous. All the polynomial functions are derivable and this is also a derivable function. Hence, two conditions met. So, whenever you will get a question and you are getting a polynomial function, you will write these two lines, two conditions met. Third step will be find a f of a and f of b. a and b value will be given to you in the question. You will find f of a and f of b. Now see, either f of a will be equal to f of b or they will not be equal. Let me take the case when they both will be equal. If f of a is equal to f of b, then all the conditions of Rowley theorem are met. Right? Because the third point is they should be equal. Okay, done. Now what you will do further? You find f dash x. Okay, what will you do? You will find f dash x, find the derivative of the given function in the question. You will get a term, find f dash c by replacing x by c. Whatever derivative you will get in that answer, put c. I am asking you to put c in the derivable answer, not in the question, not in the given function. You will put c in the differentiable function. Put c by replacing x in f dash c. Now equate this equal to 0 and find the value of c. Clear? Now the value of c, if it is lying between this open interval a comma b, then you will write that the Rawls theorem verified at this value of c. Okay? Now here I was telling that either they will be equal or will not be equal. If they are not equal, then since this condition is not met, Rawls theorem not applicable. Your answer will be over in one line if a f of a and f of b is not equal. And in case they are equal, your step will be to find the derivative of the function. In the answer, you put c instead of x, then put it equal to 0. And if the value of c is lying between these two terms, then the Rowley theorem verified.
Now one more trick and trick I like to give it to you. Rolle's theorem for the greatest integer function. If you are getting, if if you are getting a function which is the greatest integer function, it will be always in this bracket. These type of functions are not derivable at integer points and they are not continuous at integer points. So if you are getting a question in this type of bracket, it will be the greatest integer function. You will write no need to prove. You just write that they are not continuous. They are not differentiable. So the first two conditions of Rolle's theorem not met. Rolle's theorem not applicable. No need to go to the third condition. Very simple. Okay. I hope I have tried to make this Rolle's theorem a little more easier to you. If you have any doubts regarding this article, you can please ask me in the comment section. Like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. Stay blessed.